This presentation is called Applying Hamilton's Rule and Inclusive Fitness Part 2. So in this presentation we're going to present another case study of kin selection which is social cooperation evolving as close genetic kin assist one another and another case that shows that altruism among genetic kin is actually genetic self-interest. So here's another case of testing Hamilton's rule, our second case. And in this case, the behavioral trait of interest is male yearlings um, among pied kingfishers who help their parents uh, rather than mating themselves. So this is called helpers at the nest, and it's seen in a variety of species of birds, as well as other uh, species, including humans. You're a helper at the nest when you stay around and care for your little brothers and sisters uh, rather than going off and starting your own family. So this was a result of a multi-year study by a behavioral ecologist named Yuli Ryer. And the just so story here is that helpers increase their inclusive fitness even though they decrease their direct fitness the first paper that reported this was published in 1984 in Animal Behavior, and it was called Investment and Relatedness, a Cost-Benefit Analysis of Breeding and Helping in the Pied Kingfisher. So you can see the role of Hamilton's rule in shaping this study. So this study is quite complex, and we're going to have a harder time summarizing it quickly, but we're going to simplify it into seven findings. And the first finding that Ryer made was that helpers lack mates. So the reason why uh, some males stay around and become helpers at the nest is because they fail to find a mate uh, during their first year. These are yearling uh, pied kingfishers. The second finding is that for males who fail to find a mate, they actually engage in three different reproductive strategies. One strategy, Ryer called the primary helpers, and these are the ones who help at the nest of their mothers and sometimes their fathers, but sometimes a new male comes to the nest and they end up helping their mother and stepfather raise their half-siblings. The second strategy, Ryer called the secondary helpers, and these are the pied kingfishers who don't help at the nest of their mother, but rather find the nest of an unrelated female, and they assist her and another male that she's nested with during their first year. The third strategy are the delayers, and they don't do anything to help anyone. They just wait out their first year and then try again to mate during the second year. The third finder that Ryer found was that the primary helpers were really hard workers and delivered a lot more fish uh, to the nest of their mothers uh, than did secondary helpers to the nest of the unrelated females. So you can see from this chart, I believe the figure was an average of about 85 fish delivered by primary helpers, whereas secondary helpers averaged only 15 fish. And, of course, the delayers uh, delivered no fish at all uh, because they didn't help anyone. And this could make sense, perhaps, in terms of Hamilton's rule because the secondary helpers are helping unrelated nestlings, whereas the primary helpings are helping either full or half-siblings. The fourth key Ryer found was that the primary helpers have more impact on the survival of the nestlings than do the secondary helpers. And, of course, the delayers have no impact at all. So what this chart shows is the increase in offspring survival. And on average, 1.8 more offspring survived at the nest with primary helpers than at nest without any help, whereas just over one additional offspring survived at the nest assisted by secondary helpers. So all of those fish did make a difference. The fifth finding was that there's a cost paid by these primary helpers. And the, they pay a couple of hard costs, and one is they have lower survival. Perhaps this is because they burn so much energy helping, but just over half of the primary helpers survive to the second year. 
whereas over 70% of the secondary helpers and about the same number of delayers survived to their second year. So that's the cost here. You help your mother and her mate, who may or may not be your genetic father, raise more nestlings. The cost that you pay that makes us altruism is that you face decreased chances of survival to a second year when you might mate yourself. The sixth finding was that besides surviving in lower numbers, primary helpers also have lower direct fitness. So this chart shows the share of birds that follow these different strategies, the share who managed to find a mate during their second year. For the primary helpers, it's just over half of them. For the secondary helpers, that's 91%. And the idea here is that generally the mate for those secondary helpers is the unrelated female who they helped the year before. So what they're really doing is upping their direct fitness by establishing this relationship with an unrelated female who they will mate with later. Primary helpers have to go out and find an unrelated female who they haven't helped and they have less success. The lowest success rate, however, went to the delayers. Our final finding is that when uh, Ryer added all this up and multiplied it by relatedness, the primary helpers ended up with the highest inclusive fitness among the three strategies. So gains in inclusive fitness outweighed the losses in direct fitness. We can see that for the delayers, because they helped no one, inclusive fitness added nothing uh, to their fitness. When we look at the secondary helpers, it's the same thing, but their direct fitness is much higher. And what I'm showing here by having both of these bars is that inclusive fitness made no difference. There's no increase there until we get to the primary helpers. And when we get to them, we find that when we add together their indirect fitness through helping their siblings survive in that first year to their direct fitness through their mating success in the second year, they end up with the highest reproductive fitness of any of these three strategies, right about one units of additional fitness, and they come out the most successful. So let's summarize the three strategies here. Helpers at their mother's nest have middling direct fitness, but the highest inclusive fitness. So these are the primary helpers who altruistically sacrifice direct fitness, but gain inclusive fitness, and in the end, they have the highest reproductive fitness. Then we have the secondary helpers who help at unrelated females nest. They have the highest direct fitness and the highest chances of mating successfully, but there's no gain in, in, in indirect fitness that they can add to that. And so their fitness ends up overall lower than the primary helpers. The lowest fitness was a strategy of the delayers who don't help anywhere. They have both the lowest chance of mating during the second year, and they gain nothing in indirect fitness. And remember that inclusive fitness adds direct fitness to indirect fitness. So the key here to this study and to any study based on Hamilton's rule is inclusive fitness. Direct fitness, remember, is parent to offspring fitness. In this case, the pied kingfishers that are primary helpers at their mother's nest sacrifice direct fitness, but they pick up indirect fitness and this is by helping their mothers uh, raise more siblings and half-siblings. And it's when we add their direct fitness from mating plus their indirect fitness through helping, they end up with the most successful strategy of reproduction. Thank you for listening.